the government loses its majority. And that would mean that coalition of chaos with Labour, the Lib Dems and the SNP. It would mean Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> in number 10, John McDonnell at the Treasury. And what a combination that would be. We know they would wreck our economy. And what we also know with Labour is that it's ordinary working people who always pay the price. And in that coalition of chaos, of course, there's a third element. We'd see the SNP and Nicola Sturgeon pulling the strings. So we can prevent that from happening. Every vote for Conservative candidates here and around the country can prevent that from happening. Every vote for Conservative candidates will strengthen my hand in those Brexit negotiations. And every vote for Conservative candidates is a vote to build that better, brighter future for our country. So let's go out there with renewed determination over these last hours. Let's put every effort into that campaigning. Let's go out there, not for ourselves, but for the future of our country. And I have a very simple message to people. Vote Conservative in the national interest. Give me your backing to lead Britain. Give me the authority to speak for Britain. Strengthen my hand is a vote when I negotiate build. for Britain. And with your backing, I will deliver for Britain. Thank you. Now, we have some members of the media here. Andy. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, when you called this election, a lot of people were talking about a landslide. No one's talking about that anymore. Isn't the reason for that the campaign that you've led? It's been a disappointment, hasn't it? There is only one poll that matters. I've never talked about uh, predicting election, the result of an election. I never do that. I say there's one simple thing you need to do in an election, which is just go out there and work to earn the support of voters. That's exactly what I've been doing. It's what Chloe and Lana have been doing. It's what candidates all around have been doing. It's what all these activists have been doing. So the only poll that matters is the one that takes place tomorrow. Ben. Thank you. Uh, ben Wright from the BBC. Prime Minister, throughout this campaign, you've said that you have a plan for Brexit. But uh, after six, seven weeks, voters are no clearer to knowing how you plan to pull Britain out of the single market, what bill you might pay Brussels, what the consequence of you failing uh, would be. You haven't given voters a clear choice on Brexit at all, have you? Yes, I have. Can I just uh, point out that I gave a speech back in January where I set out the negotiating, negotiating objectives for Brexit. We've repeated those, we've set those out clearly in our manifesto. Uh, in the Article 50 letter, triggering the start of the negotiations, I set out clearly objectives that we've got. A comprehensive free trade agreement, a deep and special partnership with the EU in the future. We believe it's right that the EU remains strong, continuing to cooperate on security and uh, defence matters. And there are other, I say, 12 objectives that I've set out for the Brexit negotiations. I've been very clear what our plan for Brexit is. Jeremy Corbyn's had, I think, seven Brexit plans in nine months. <laughs> when you're going into those negotiations, you need to know what you want and you need to know what you're, you're, how you're going to go about it, and we do. Right. Um, Robert? Prime Minister Robert Nisbet, Sky News. After the 7-7 bombings, the Conservatives accused the Labour government of a knee-jerk response. Aren't you doing exactly the same by a warning of tightening uh, human rights legislation? No, what I've set out is very clear. We are seeing the terrorist threat changing. We are see it in, seeing it evolve and we need to respond to that. And as I said on the steps of Downing Street, enough is enough and things have to change. And that's why I've said I believe we do need to do more to tackle the ideology that is motivating the perpetrators of these attacks. We do need to have those international agreements to regulate cyberspace so that terrorists cannot plan online. I think we need to do more to stamp out extremism here in communities in Britain. 
And yes, we do need to look at the powers for the police and security intelligence agencies to make sure that as the threat evolves, they have the powers that they need. And I've talked about some of those powers, like making it easier to deport uh, foreign terrorist suspects, uh, like uh, being able to do more to restrict the freedom and movements of terror suspects when we know uh, they are a threat, uh, but when we're not able to, we don't have the evidence to prosecute them fully in court. And uh, longer sentences for terrorism-related offences, for those who are uh, convicted of terrorism-related offences. And what I've been clear about is that if human rights laws gets in the way of us doing those things, which I think are necessary as the threat has evolved, then we will change those laws. Um, it's, hello. Yes. Thank you. Uh, William James from Reuters. Prime Minister, how would any of the measures uh, on human rights and counterterrorism that you've announced in the last 24 hours have prevented the last three terrorist attacks in the UK? In, in those cases, all the suspects were already known to MI5 and the security services. What I'm talking about is how we adapt to a threat that is evolving. What we've seen, sadly, in this country in the last three months is three terrorist attacks. We've also seen five attacks foiled by the police and the security services. So the tempo has increased. We're seeing terrorism breeding terrorism, and we're seeing the, the, the type of attack in terms of the crude methods used. So the threat is evolving. We need to adapt our response to that. I've been uh, very, very much, obviously, as Home Secretary, I was clear that when the police and security services wanted uh, the laws and powers to be able to uh, enable them to do their job, that we gave them to them. We've given the police new powers. We've set in major legislation, the powers for the security services and the police. But now that the threat is becoming more complex and evolving, we need to look at, at, at uh, adapting our response to make sure they have the powers that they need. Yes. Hi, Prime Minister. Thank you. Steve Hawkes at The Sun. There may be scores of Labour voters who can't, who can't bear to vote for Jeremy Corbyn tomorrow, but they're not quite sure about backing the Conservatives just yet, perhaps for the first time in their lives. What message can you give to them about how away from Brexit you will change their lives for the better over the next five years? Well, yes. I mean, I would say to people, it's not a question of how they voted before. It's a question of who they want to see taking this country through uh, not just the next five years, but setting the direction of this country for the future. And I would say to those voters that I think many of them will be people, the sort of people I met when I stood, for example, up in northwest Durham some years ago. People who are fiercely patriotic, who are very proud of their part of the country, who want to see good jobs for their children, who want their children to get a good quality of education, who want the public services to be there to support them when they need it. And it's the Conservative Party, because we will build that strong economy that will see more jobs, that will see better paid jobs. We will be on people's side. We will help them with the cost of living through capping those rip-off energy tariffs. But through developing that strong economy, through growing our economy, we can ensure we can invest in the NHS. We can provide a good school place for every child. And crucially, we'll also provide proper technical education for young people for the first time in this country. Yeah, yes, sorry. Prime Minister uh, Henry Zeffman from The Times. Uh, in 2011, as Home Secretary, you scrapped control orders uh, and replaced them with less restrictive powers over terrorist suspects. Now you want to beef powers back up again. Uh, isn't this just another U-turn? No, uh, the reason we did what we did with control orders was because the courts were increasingly knocking those control orders down. So we did introduce the TPIMS and we have subsequently enhanced the TPIMS. As I said earlier, now that we're seeing the threat evolving, becoming more complex, it's right that we look again at what powers are needed in order to be able to ensure that the police and security services have what they need. And I'll take a couple more. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. No, the gentleman just in front of the lamp here. Yes, with the beard. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. Mesa Hall from the Daily Express. Sorry, Mesa. Um, yes. you, you've, you've talked today about reigniting the spirit of the British people. Have you now come to the conclusion that it was our membership of the European Union that stuffed it out? No. What I think is that there is a real opportunity for us now as uh, coming together as the United Kingdom, grasping those opportunities that are available to us as we come out of the European Union. But to do that, we have to have that spirit of 
optimism and of getting out across the world, of trading across the world, of encouraging investment here, of seeing more jobs jobs coming here and, and ensuring there is opportunity for everybody. So I said it's about ensuring that people know that it's not about where they come from, um, but it's actually about them and their hard work that will get them on in life. I think that's so important. <laughs> um, um, oh, well, I'll take Emily. Emily Morgan from ITV News. Prime Minister, you said you wouldn't make policy up on the hoof, but isn't that exactly what you did last night in a desperate attempt to persuade voters that you are tough on terror? And if I may, you've had your ups and downs over the last few weeks. What would you say that you've learnt about yourself during this campaign? I would say what I know from this campaign, but what I've always known about myself is that when it comes to campaigns, I like to get out and about and meet voters. It's what I've always done through election campaigns throughout my entire political career. And what I am doing is setting out for people, as we've seen a change in the threat, as we've seen that greater complexity, that great higher tempo, the steps that we will take. But many of these are not things that have suddenly come onto the page book. I've been talking about some of these issues before. I've had, you know, I've talked about de deporting foreign terror suspects. I had quite a job making sure that uh, we got one certain hate preacher, Abu Qatada, out of the country. Yeah. But I did it. Now, there are more. <laughs> I, will, I will just now take a, a, a couple more. Right at the back, so I can't see all the faces when... Yes. Yes, sorry. Yeah, hello. Uh, Owen Bennett, Huffington Post. Um, you've appeared at a lot of events like this with activists. Jeremy Corbyn is attracting thousands upon thousands of people to rallies. Does that worry you at all? No, I've done all sorts of events. I've been talking, I've been into workplaces and actually talked to people in their workplace about the issues that matter to them and taken their questions. And yes, I'm here with activists today, but this is the last stages of the campaign. And as you heard, I'm encouraging everybody to get out over the next 36 hours and get those votes out uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and I'll take, well, Quentin, my last question, why not? Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, can you please um, promise Brenda from Bristol and also the, uh, the nation's beleaguered sketchwriters that there will not be another general election, another referendum for the next five years? <laughs> I mean, when I called the election, I said that it was because I was concerned that the other parties wanted to frustrate the Brexit negotiations, but also that the country needed that stability over the five years. And on the question of a referendum, I can assure you we're the one party that is going to deliver on the will of the British people, respect the will of the British people, ensure we come out of Brexit, and there's no second referendums, unlike other parties. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.